Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'd like to go over a subject that we covered in our live uh, Discord session in class this morning, which is volume. I would like to uh, touch base with everyone on uh, what I look for each day volume-wise when I change up my approach and why, and I'd like to go into detail with you guys a little bit today as well. If anyone wants to uh, get in on those Discord live sessions when they first come out and have access to those uh, recorded sessions, please reach out in the comments below. So MMV, we're going to go over this volume here. We can see that we've got some colored uh, candles. And this is an indicator that I have for myself to spot volume, but you don't need that indicator. I didn't use it for years of trading, so it's not something that's definitely needed. But uh, this is a trading view uh, chart. We have MMV, which made a huge move in Friday's uh, pre-market session. This gray area is that pre-market session. What we're looking for is high volume on the day. And what we first verify is that it meets our other uh, requirements to take the trade possibly and depending really on your strategy, whether it's going to fit your uh, risk profile and and, uh, and all that. So it's a low float stock, eight and a half million share float. We can see over here in trading view on the side in the details uh, pane, just click that there and you'll see that. Uh, and what we can see is that if I hover over each one of these candles in the status bar up top, you're going to see a, a list of, of information. You're going to see the O, which is the open price of the current candle that you're hovering over. So you can see it changes as I go over each candle. Uh, you're going to see the open price of each candle, the H, which is the high of each candle, L, which is low. So you're going to see the high and the low, and you're going to see the closed price as well. So where that candle closed. So the close is very important to me in my strategy. I look for a candle to close over a predetermined resistance paired with volume, which we're going over today uh, to look for a possible entry and to get in and get back out. Uh, if it doesn't have that volume for me, I either have to greatly reduce my size, tighten up my stop loss, and don't wait for a candle to close back under that support level to bail, or sometimes I just avoid the trade altogether. But volume right so we're looking at these candles here and we're looking at the top a few more little tidbits of information we have the percentage of each candle whether it's negative or positive uh, green oftentimes means positive unless you have the color changed and of course red is going to be negative and so we're looking to avoid those major reds right and so this one over here is a major negative five percent candle you can see that right up there so next to that we have the volume and that is what's key right that's what we're looking for now uh, a lot of members have uh, Benzinga Pro, and so let me pull up uh, Benzinga as well as I use it fairly often. And uh, let me reset this chart here. That didn't work, so let's uh, let's type in a ticker, any ticker. Uh, let's MMV, right? That's the one we're on. I can see that it's not pulling up data at this time. There it is. All right. So just had to hit the uh, one minute. This is a uh, should be a one minute chart. Let me just verify. Here we go. So one minute chart. Nothing there. Let's go to a uh, five minute chart. There we go. Okay. So it's not a one minute chart, but same idea, right? So we're looking for again, volume, but what the point is, is what I'm trying to make here is if you're using trading view charts or Benzinga, if you keep your cursor, right? Or your mouse to the right hand side, past all the candles, you're going to see up here that volume is going to be for the most recent candle, which is this candle back here. And so that's really important to me and my strategy because I'm trading one minute volume and one minute confirmations. So I'm using the one minute chart for my uh, strategy every day for the confirmation strategy. And that's uh, something that I trade live in voice every day uh, in the morning. And I also uh, go over it in our chat every day in Discord. So we're looking for a volume, right? So again, if you're trading with uh, Benzinga here, or if you're trading with TradingView, or really any broker and charting platform is going to have some type of volume to tell you what is the volume on each one of these candles. And if it doesn't, then uh, there may be an indicator uh, that, that will, and we'll go over that as well in a second. So volume, right? We're looking for high volume. So in the pre-market session, this gray session, I'm looking for uh, less volume than I'm looking for during the market session. And the reason for that is because in the pre-market session, we have basically, I like to call it first dibs on a lot of these uh, opportunities, right? We get that Benzinga news. Uh, we get the, the scanners are popping up, right? It's over here. It's just hitting highs over and over and over. So we've got our scanners going crazy. So we know that there's value there. We know that there's volume there. And so in the pre-market session, we're getting first dibs at a lot of these 
these uh, opportunities, right? So a lot of the market hasn't really seen this type of move. And a lot of traders really prefer to trade after the uh, market open. So that would be over here in this, uh, this area on the right hand side. So the gray area is pre market. So a key note, and something to definitely uh, keep in mind is, for me and my strategy, I'm looking for less volume in the pre market than required to take my trade uh, than I am in the regular market session. So once we hit this 930 bell and we start moving on, then I start to look for more volume. I start to look for higher volume and the requirements are going to go up. So it's very important for myself. So MMV over here, left-hand side, pre-market session in the gray. I'm looking for lower volume. For me, I'm looking for a certain number of shares. For everyone that's different, uh, you know, some traders are looking for either a number of shares or percentage move or or for whatever, or maybe a relative volume uh, shift and change between these candles. And you can definitely look for that. Some people look for a gradual uh, volume that's coming into it. So that way you can see that there's uh, consistent volume and there's uh, consistent, uh, you know, opportunity here and basically, basically attention onto this name, right? So, but very easily we can spot that volume hovering over each one of these candles right there at the top in that status line. So that's one way of doing it. So another way of doing it would be to, of course, add an indicator. So we can go into the indicators, type in volume, and we can see uh, right down here, we have volume with star next to it. And this is again in trading view, click that. And you can see this is a pretty standard bar graph for that volume. So we can see that we are uh, increasing in volume until we have the spike. And again, this is the market hour. So that's the type of volume we're going to see during the market hour. So this is why pre market, we require less volume to trade my strategy than I typically would during the market hours over here on the right hand side. And we can see the market hours has a lot more volume. So if I put a line down here, and you can see all of these bars above that line, we have a lot of volume above that, right? So this candle here had 2 million shares traded, we didn't have a single uh, candle in the pre market that had 2 million shares. So that's why the volume requirements will go up during the regular market session, right? So as I uh, put that volume on in trading view, we can see now this bar graph at the bottom. And each one of these is going to represent the volume for that, uh, that one minute candle. And what's important too is in the left hand side in your indicators, you'll see the volume is right there. And it's changing as I hover over each one of these candles. And that's because it's again, giving us the uh, volume for whatever time frame you're looking for. So right now I'm looking at a one minute chart on MMV. So each one of these candles represents one minute of information. And this information here is telling me how much volume was in on that one minute candle. And that's very important to me because again, you know, if I had a line, uh, for instance, a line, right, that was a maybe a resistance line there in green, I'll change it to uh, white. If I had a line that was here at 216, which I believe I did, and I'll we'll check the chart here in a minute, but uh, if I had a level at 216 and I'm looking for a clean close over that level paired with volume, well, we can see that right here, this candle was a pretty bullish engulfing candle, right? Nice looking candle closed over that level. And it did it with volume, 484,000 shares traded on this candle here and 163,000 shares on this candle here. So apparently, uh, others were looking for that same type of move. Now, this is a close above highs as well. So there's a lot of reasons to like that candle, right? But it also had the volume, which is very important because if we don't have volume, then we don't have liquidity. And if we don't have liquidity, then what happens is the spread tends to get wide. So I have a uh, confirmation strategy guide uh, that goes over my entire uh, strategy, right? The complete low flow day trading guide. So, and uh, one of the major red flags, as you can see here, major red flags to avoid, I'll scroll down to it. Let me go ahead and get down to the major red flags. So down here, major red flags, number one is low volume, right? Low volume is a major red flag. So we, we don't want to see that. And if we do, it's okay, we can still trade it, but we want to be aware of that condition. And we want to make sure that we are adjusting our approach because of those conditions. And what happens is you can tend to have that lower volume and it's going to result in a wide spread, right? And a wide spread is the difference between the bid and ask. So an example is right here and I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better, but this is the example, right? A wide spread. You look at the bid, it's $1.17 and you look at the ask is $1.25.
Now that's an issue because that's an eight cent spread. And it's not crazy, right? That's not the biggest spread that I've seen, but it's a type of spread that if you're buying in the pre-market, similar to how I am, where a lot of times I'm buying the ask, then what's happening is I'm getting filled closer to that 125. And then if I panic and say, you know what, this isn't working out for me, I need to get back out. And I go to sell, then what happens is I'm dealing with slippage because I have to sell the bid to get filled. And to sell the bid, I'll be taking an eight cent per share loss on my order immediately. If I just hit at, buy the ask, sell the bid immediately, you would take a loss, right? And that's because there's a wide spread. And why is there a wide spread? It's because there is low volume right there, low volume, right? So an example would be, of course, $2 if you saw that on the bid and the ask is 250. That's a 50 cent spread. And that can get you in a lot of trouble in these markets. So make sure you stick to high volume because if you're sticking to lower volume names and you're trading with any real size, then what tends to happen is you deal with slippage and you can't get filled on your full size order. So a lot of times you're getting filled in a partial size order and that can get you in a lot of trouble, right? Because then if you don't cancel out your order and it knifes down on you, you get filled maybe later than you want to. Uh, so some traders deal with that. Other traders may deal with, uh, you know, you get filled in a partial order and it just knifes down anyway. You didn't get filled in the rest. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of things. It could, of course, go in your favor and that'd be great. But of course, if you have low volume, then the probability and the chances of it going uh, up in a strong move is less likely and less consistent. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Now, I've seen low volume moves, uh, you know, make a huge move on the chart all the time. We've seen it with, uh, I believe, HKD and some of these bigger names. That is common and can happen, but those are not going to be consistent or consistently profitable setups in my experience. And so therefore, I look for higher quality setups paired with volume to get in and out of my trades with any real size. Now, I can always trade those other names like top HKD and things like that, but will I throw the kitchen sink at them? No, I will not. And why? Because we are lacking in that volume, right? So this is one way to spot that volume. You have the volume uh, bars down here at the bottom. A lot of traders start with that and that's fine. Uh, you can, of course, uh, get rid of that if you don't want to have that on your chart. I prefer to have just the uh, support and resistance levels. I don't use VWAP. I don't use SMA, uh, smooth moving averages, and I don't use EMAs. I don't uh, use any of that. Not against it. I don't think that there's anything really wrong with them. But for me as a trader, what's worked is support and resistance paired with volume. Very important, right? So MMV 216 closed over that level with 163,000 shares. I consider that high volume. So if I switch over to, uh, if I switch over to this one here, right? MMV, this is going to be a chart that we marked up and had in our discord. So if you go into our discord channel and I, uh, blow this up here and we go to our mark charts channel you're going to see that uh, these charts have been added in here mmv was added at 8 39 a.m on friday 8 39 a.m right so let's see where that was here's 8 37 8 38 8 39 so on this red candle pullback this chart had already been marked and so therefore for confirmation we're looking for a clean close over this predetermined level to then consider this bullish until it gets over this dollar 38 we can't consider it bullish right and we can see that we have this yellow candle and in the pre-market session i have this uh, indicator that will let me know what the volume is at that time and so i paint the candles based on the volume and you guys can uh, make this and and uh, we do have this available as well for trading view as well as think or swim so if you guys are interested in this uh, reach out to me and we'll go over uh, how you can get that but Here's the volume, we can change the color. So if I want the color to uh, on the breakout candles to be uh, pink or, or red, I can do that, right? If I want them yellow or, or uh, blue, we can do that too, right? So you can adjust it however uh, you see fit. So yellow candles, that's the, the requirements I need for the pre-market session. So if I'm looking for volume, then these green and red candles are just not doing it for me. Now I can still take the trade, but it's not hitting the required volume for myself and my own strategy. And it's not breakout type of volume in this pre-market session. And therefore, if I do take this trade, I have to greatly reduce my size and tighten up my stop loss, right? That's how I approach this type of uh, setup. 
So what happens is, as you can see here, bullish engulfing candles, but they're on, as I hover over and you see the volume at the top, they're only on 4,000 and 5,000 shares. So if I switch back over here, and we look at those two candles, that's these same two candles right here, right? 4,000 and 5,000 shares. Now, you would think these are uh, really strong looking candles. Look at that price action, it's, it's beautiful, right? Strong bullish engulfing candles, it looks very positive. Why not buy it and throw the kitchen sink at it and run for the hills, right? And just get that big profit. Now, yes, this one did work out, but more times than not, what happens is you'll see it just knife back down and continue further down. So for me, number one personal rule is no volume, no trade. So as these candles are moving up and they have 4,000 and 5,000 shares, I'm basically waiting myself to look for a, uh, a higher quality opportunity to get into this trade. Now, that doesn't mean I couldn't uh, take a starter knowing these conditions and just reducing my size and tightening up that stop loss to protect myself. And of course, in the pre-market session, we're all very uh, well aware that you can't have a stop loss. So I'm talking about a mental stop loss. So make sure you keep that finger on the trigger. If of course you're in the pre-market session, you're trading with this lower liquidity and lower volume. But if I'm trading 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 shares, I'm not going to get filled when I'm only seeing 4,000 and 5,000 shares traded total on these two candles. And if I do, what's happening is oftentimes you're getting filled at the very top because you're buying the ask, which is up here, and the bid is somewhere down here on that candle. So if you sell immediately, you take an immediate loss, right? So no volume, no trade, number one rule for myself. If I take a trade without that volume, it falls into a risk it for the biscuit type of category. And therefore I know what I'm getting myself into and I won't throw the kitchen sink at it and I will reduce my risk. So as we move up, we can see that this candle had 20,000 shares. This candle had 61,000 shares. So we went from 5,000 shares to 20 to 61,000 and guess what? We got ourselves that yellow breakout volume that we're looking for on the day in the pre-market session. So once we see that white, that means we have high breakout volume. And therefore, the uh, thing about that is that's what I'm looking for during the market session. So during the market session, of course, these yellow candles are just not going to do it for me because I want increased uh, volume because, of course, we have increased volume on the day overall. We have more traders and more uh, algorithms uh, trading it as well. So in the pre-market session, this gray again, and I know it looks like a mess with all these lines, but just bear with me. Uh, we're looking for a clean close over a predetermined resistance to then take the trade. Of course, that has to be paired with volume. And we have that volume over here. So volume, 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 right? We started picking up in volume and that was uh, all she wrote. Then we had the liquidity. We knew we had the volume and all we're looking for then at this point is a clean close over predetermined resistance. 216 was the level I got in in chat. And the reason I got in there is because we had a cluster of resistance. So if you take a look at this, uh, we have a cluster of resistance right here, right? So as you can see, this is a cluster of resistance. We have a lot of lines, right? It's very simply put. And again, we have this chart in chat before this move ever happens. So we're well aware that this is what we are looking to uh, expect on the day, right? Let me zoom out here. There we go. So this is the chart that I added in chat at 839. So right there at 839 a.m. Eastern time, we had that pullback. We had that little red candle. We closed back above all the way up here, and that was just gone to the races. Now, we have these in chat and ready to go before this move again ever happened. So we're well aware that there was a cluster of resistance. So it doesn't mean that we can't take the trade, but it's another red flag in my strategy that lets me know that uh, maybe I want to wait for a cleaner setup. So so the 216 was that setup. And what happened was we clean closed over with a bullish engulfing candle, right? This green candle, this would be a green candle if I turned off my volume, right? Green candle. And we had that breakout volume, white candle there, 163,000 shares closing over a predetermined level 216. And that's where I got in. One minute later, we hit one, two, three targets, scaled out, held a lotto, got myself a beautiful move on MMV. And so did a lot of members in our uh, Discord as well. So we have all these levels ready. And in chat, I'm adding these charts as it continues up. I'm adding new charts. I'm adding new uh, levels. So you guys have uh, these levels and you're well aware of them, but I, uh, I, we keep up on this throughout the day. So at this point, we're looking for that volume. So once we get into the regular market session, well, we want that high volume. We don't want to see yellow candles. That's the pre-market volume. We want to see high volume and we have that high volume here, but unfortunately we had a bullish 
vertical trend. One, two, three, four, five, six, excuse me, five uh, green bars in a row. If I turn this volume off, you'll see that right there. So green bars in a row, right? And the bullish vertical trend, the BB uh, bullish vertical trend spotter here, let me know that there is a major red flag here, right? Major red flag. So don't take that trade, right? It has to close over that $4 mark. 396 is a uh, smaller time frame level, $4 being the mental uh, whole dollar test. If I think it's going to get all the way up to 672, well, it's got to close over that predetermined resistance paired with volume first. And unfortunately, we had this nasty candle over here after uh, a handful of nasty candles on the day, and it did not close over that level. And that was, uh, again, all she wrote. So this is that volume we're looking for. So the thing is, though, guys, not all stocks are the same. So there is some differences. Now, here's the thing. This one on MMV, it started out cheap. And let me switch over to this other chart. MMV uh, started out cheap, right? 94 cents was the low right here. 94 cents. It started out around a dollar, right? So this is a cheapo. Anything under $2, I consider to be a cheapo. And therefore, if it's a cheapo, then uh, retail traders like you and I should be able to acquire more shares at a time, right? It should be easier to acquire 5,000, 10,000 shares at a time. And so we should see more volume. It should be common sense to understand that we should see more volume. And if we don't see that volume, that's okay. Again, we can take the trade, but we have to adjust our approach. Why? Because we don't have that breakout volume and that strength. In the market, that volume is, you know, I think is the best indicator in our market, especially if you're a day trader like myself, because the, the volume is telling us a story, guys. It's telling us, is there strength in this name? And of course, the market will tell us if there's strength in the name because the volume will tell us that on these candles. And right here on MMV, we had that, uh, that pullback and we started to pick up in volume right here on this candle. And that's where we all of a sudden started shifting and the momentum really uh, went from there. Now we could trade this down here, but again, it's a very inconsistent type of uh, type of move. But because this was down here at 94 cents in a dollar, then I want to see more shares. So if I'm looking for, uh, you know, maybe a handful of shares, if I'm looking for a number of shares or a percentage gain, maybe I'm looking for a, a little bit something greater here because of why? Well, because it's a cheapo and common sense is telling me that retail traders like myself should be able to acquire more shares if there is strength in this name. And if there is not strength in this name, then I don't have to take the trade because again, it's not fitting my profile as an A plus strategy because it is a cheapo. Now it doesn't mean it's not high quality, but it means it may not be my A plus setup, right? And again, uh, everyone is different. So that's MMV right here. If it's cheap, we can see it's a low float name. Now, CVNA was uh, a beautiful move the other day. I want to go over this one as well with, with everyone because I went over it in our uh, Discord session. And if you guys uh, saw this, you'll see CVNA had uh, volume, right? Or excuse me, it had the price action. It had a beautiful move on uh, Friday. I believe this is Friday's session. No, that was Friday's. So Thursday's session was a beautiful move. But the thing about it is uh, we have the volume indicator on here. We don't have a whole lot of volume in this pre-market session. So moves like this one over here, this is not bad, but it's hard for me to get behind this type of move. Why? Because it has a larger float. So it has an 84 million share float. So the larger the float means there's more shares available for trading in uh, this uh, in this float size, right? So that means, again, common sense is telling me that it's going to take more uh, shares traded for this to really make a move in the right direction. So do I want to throw the kitchen sink at this? Maybe not. And do I need uh, maybe extra volume because of that float size? Yes. So the lower the float, the uh, the less volume is really required, but at the same time, I still have uh, minimum requirements that need to be met first. And I think everyone can agree. Again, number one rule, no volume, no trade if you're trading with any real size. If you're trading with a smaller size, it may not uh, really affect you as much. But of course, again, I don't know how consistent that uh, type of strategy is. So during market hours, again, beautiful move, a lot of yellow candles. And so the thing about these larger uh, floats, 
is that uh, algorithmic trading and computer-based trading is, is going to take place a lot more often. And therefore, we're fighting against the computers, right? So that's not something I want to get in the habit of doing. And also what happens is if I'm focused on this one, that's a lower quality setup due to that flow in the volume, and I miss out on something like MMV, then I'm really going to be upset with myself. And I've found that uh, to avoid that type of, of uh, you know situation, what I can do is focus on higher quality setups and let the rest go. So yes, I could take a trade on CVNA. Yes, it would have been a beautiful move. Uh, and yes, I made money on Thursday, uh, but I did it with, uh, I forget the stock, but I did not do it with CVNA and have to check my log. But uh, I did it with something that was a little bit higher quality to me and I made money. So if you made money on CVNA, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying for myself and my own strategy is that I'm looking for higher quality setups. And if I see those higher quality setups, I will take them. And if I see these lower quality setups, I just will adjust uh, my approach, right? I will adjust the approach getting into these type of names uh, like CVNA here with that higher float. So if it has a higher float, I want to see more volume. And if it has a cheaper price, like MMV, a dollar price, again, I want to see more volume. Why? Because common sense is telling me that retail traders should be able to acquire more shares and so therefore i should see that uh, either uh, through just this volume these indicators or even the tape uh, but really when it comes to these larger float names again same idea i need uh, more volume otherwise it's going to fall in the category of a risk it for the biscuit which is uh, you know again reduce my size tighten up my stop loss all that good stuff so guys, uh, I think that's pretty much it for volume. If you're looking for overall volume, that's going to be the volume right here. That's the overall volume. If someone says there's high relative volume, that means that uh, say a stock had 100,000 shares traded yesterday. Yesterday, uh, Today it has 200,000 shares traded. That means its uh, relative volume should be around two. So you know, if you're looking for high relative volume, it depends on which time frame you're looking for or uh, things like that. But when I'm trading the confirmation strategy, I'm looking for high volume on the one minute chart closing over these predetermined levels and that's exactly what we got with mmv and we had a absolutely beautiful move anyone who held a lotto from that entry uh their live in voice that was uh, about an 80 percent move to the highs on the day to that four dollar mark so that's an absolutely beautiful move and these are the type of moves that i'm looking for uh each day so guys Number one, personal rule, no volume, no trade. Uh, the lower the float, the better. That's how I look at it. Uh, but of course, the higher the float, it's going to require more volume. The cheaper the price, it's going to require more volume. And our scanners will be our radar and let us know where that volume is. So guys, if you have any questions or if you want to join the Discord where I mark all of these charts every single day in the morning pre-market session when uh, these uh, stocks hit our scanner, what I do is pull it up. And within the first few minutes, I have the chart out for you guys so you have access to to all of my support and resistance levels. Uh, and I also have a key levels channel that I go over uh, each one of these stocks uh, and, and going over where I want to possibly get in, what levels I think is most attractive and uh, basically why. So guys, if you want to get in on that, let me know in the comments below. I'll get in touch with you. I appreciate your time and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.